And it's got the wrong Mary. In chapter 19, verse 28, it says, Mary, you have certainly done a thing unprecedented, O sister of Aaron. So Mary, the mother of Jesus, is the sister of Aaron. In chapter 66, verse 12, the same Mary, who is the mother of Jesus, is the daughter of Imran, who is the father of Aaron. And in chapter 20, verse 30, Aaron has a brother named Moses. So both Aaron and Moses, who are the sons of Imran, which is the biblical Amran, have a sister named Miriam, who is the mother of Jesus. Do you see a problem with that? Especially when you know that Aaron and Moses did have a sister named Miriam. They were all three the children of Amran, but they lived in 1400 BC. Mary lived in the first century, unless she was a very old Mary. It confuses Pharaoh, the Tower of Babel, and Haman in chapter 28, verse 38, mentioning that Haman is an Egyptian. Uh, chapter 40, verse 36 to 37, Pharaoh talks to Haman. The problem is Egypt never built any towers, as according to this story. They built pyramids. More than that, we know that Haman was not an Egyptian name. It is a Persian name, and we see him referred to in the story of Esther in chapter 3, verse 1. Pharaoh lived in 1500 B.C., whereas Haman, the Persian Haman, lived in 510 B.C. They never met each other because there was about a thousand years between them. Moses goes up to Mount Sinai, a Samedi, a means a Samaritan builds the golden calf. And it's very clear that this was a Samaritan because Moses said to him, and what is your case, O Samedi, O Samaritan? The problem is there were no Samaritans in 1400 B.C. Samaritans were not created until the fall of the northern kingdom by Israel uh, by Sargon II. And that was in 722 B.C. So how can you have Samaritans existing 700 years earlier? In chapter 34, verse 10 to 11 of the Quran, it says, it talks about David and that he was to make full coats of mail and circulate precisely the links, meaning, meaning uh, chain mail. Yet David lived in 1000 BC. There was no chain mail. They didn't have that technology in 1000 BC. Coats of chain mail were not invented until 200 BC, 800 years later. It misplaces crucifixions too early. In the story of Pharaoh and Moses, the sorcerers who could not keep up with Pharaoh, uh, sorry, with Moses, they were taken out and they were crucified. That's in 1400 BC. You see that in Surah 7, Ayah 120 to 124, and in chapter 20, verse 71. In the story of Joseph, which is in 1800 BC, again, a pharaoh takes the baker and crucifies him. You can't have crucifixions that early, because crucifixions were not introduced until 500 BC. They were not ever used in Egypt as well. Thus, crucifix uh, the Quran's crucifixions are in the wrong place, and they're about 1,000 to 1,300 years too early. Now, the one place it should have got the crucifixion right, it gets it wrong. The crucifixion of Jesus Christ. He was not crucified, according to Surah 4, Ayah 157. Yet, when you take a look at all the historical material from the first century, look at the historians who would refer to that crucifixion. You have Thallus and Phlegon, who are debating it in 52 AD, just 20 years after the event. You have Tacitus, who hated crucifixion. Christians. He was talking about it. Even he, he is the one that tells that it happened during the time of Pontius Pilate while uh, Tiberius was emperor, proving that it had to happen in 33 AD. That's why we get the date for the crucifixion. He was a Roman historian. Josephus, a Jewish historian, talks about the crucifixion, mentions not only that Jesus was crucified, but then it goes on to say that the Christians believe he rose again. So there is a Greek historian, Roman historian, and Jewish historian all talking about the crucifixion of Jesus Christ. Why did the Quran get it so wrong? And then it refuse, refers to futuristic coins. We showed these on the, on the wall, but I didn't unpack them for you. Remember it said that Joseph was sold for a few dirham counted out. Counted out means coins, am I correct? If you're counting out, there must be coins. There were no coins at the time of Joseph in 1800 BC. Coins were not invented until the 600s by the Lydians. So what coins existed at the time of Joseph, 1800 BC? And obviously, this was written long before coins, well, this was written long after coins were made and redacted back to the wrong person doing the wrong thing. But what about the Bible? Does the Bible get this wrong? When you look at Genesis 37, 28, it says that Joseph is sold for 20 shekels. A shekel is a weighted measure. 20 shekels is about 0.2% of a silver. Of, of silver. When you look at the Nuzi tablets and the Mari, Mari tablets, you will see that the price of a slave exactly fits what we see in Genesis 37. We don't ask it to be correct. It just turns out to be correct. But I'm still curious about that dirham. Because dirham is a specific coin. It's the name of a coin. Did, I, did you see, remember last night, when were the dirhams introduced? They were introduced in 661. There were no dirhams before 661 because all the Arabs would have used drachmas, either Greek drachmas or Byzantine drachmas. 
they took the drachmas and then they introduced their own coins in 661. Remember they took the, em the emperor's image off and put the caliph's image instead? You saw those last night? Which means there could be no dirhams before 661. So how could they be in a Quran referred to by a man who died in 632? That's 30 years too early. Ooh, I love that. Now God would not make these kind of mistakes. Man would. That's why I'm pointing these out to you. So when you look at these anachronisms, what we notice is the authors of the Quran do not seem to know history very well. God would not make these kind of mistakes. Man would.